Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble your toolie. Toolie ships as a partially assembled kit, so when it arrives, you'll need to assemble it before you can use it. To assemble it, we only need some very basic tools. These include a set of hex keys, which arrive with toolie, a pair of pliers, a tape measure, a small Phillips screwdriver, and four blocks of wood. Now, it doesn't have to be four blocks of wood, it can be four hardcover books, for example, as long as they're all the same thickness. Now we'll move on to assemble the first part of Tooley, which is the frame assembly. Right, to assemble the frame, we're going to need the main frame components. These comprise of two side beams. These are recognisable by they have a one red stripe on them, and all the other slots are open. So there's two of those. There's also a front assembly. You recognize this as it has um, obviously the red stripe, but it also has little bearings in the corner sections, little pulleys with bearings in them. The other section is the rear section. So this is where the motor mounts. So the motors will mount into here, the drive motors. And it also has um, some components on the back for solenoids and control boxes. The other main component is the gantry. So this is what runs back and forth along the uh, Y beams. And it has the head that rides back and forth along that, which the head's attached to. You're also going to need the mid-size hex key, which is a 2.5mm. And you're also going to need the M5 by 8mm millimeter cone grub screws. So these are what we're going to use to join these together. Right, first off, first thing we need to do is we'll grab the front section here. We'll sit it on its end so it's facing upwards. And then we can stand the beams on it. Now these wide beams, the red beam faces out away from the frame. So this one will go on this side. And it does it by just simply sliding down over the two brackets. Again, the red to the outside, sliding it down over the brackets. Right, now that we've got the uh, sides on, we're going to have to use the uh, M5 by 8mm cone point grub screws. These are what we use to hold the frame system together in the corners. So all we're going to do for now is we're going to put uh, a screw in each corner. We're going to put it in the topmost hole here and not the bottom hole, so the topmost hole or the outermost hole. So we're just going to screw this in. We're going to nip it up a little bit there. Just going to make sure that that's pushed down and flush with the outer edge of the steel corner bracket. And then we're just going to nip that up. We come across, and we'll do the same on the other side. I'm going to put that into the screw hole. Again, it's just the top one or the outermost from the corner. And we'll just tighten that up. It should be approximately flush with the steel corner bracket. So now that we've done that, we're going to turn it around. We'll just lie it down fat. And we're going to do the same on the two back corners here. So just take another grub screw, outermost hole, nip it up. And just give it a little tighten. And the same on the other side. Okay, so we should have two empty threads on the bottom here and two empty threads on the bottom there. Now that we've got the frame sides on, it's time to put the gantry on. To do this we need to do a bit of prep work. I'm just going to put the frame aside for now. Right, with the gantry you can see the gantry here, it's got uh, what we call Y carriages, one on each end of the gantry, and it's got an X carriage which moves back and forth along the, along the gantry. What we need to do first is we need to loosen off 
the uh, bolts that are holding the uh, Y carriages on just so it can freely move as we slide the gantry on. To do that we just need to loosen two bolts on each end, one on the top side, one on the underside. So I'll just go ahead and loosen those now. Careful, it does roll away. Okay, so we only need to do half a turn on each bolt in an anti-clockwise direction. And this is just to help uh, the little trucks or the, the carriages move slightly as they need to as we slide the gantry onto the onto the frame. Okay. Right, now just be a little bit careful because they are not loose on there now. If you tilt it one way or the other, they may slide off. I'm just going to put that back over here for now. Right, we're going to bring the frame back into play, but now we're going to put it on one of those wooden blocks or whatever you have sorted out for that. Um, just to help us put the gantry on because the gantry doesn't sit flush with the rest of the flame, frame, so it can't sit flat on the table. So I'm going to slide this over here. Now one of the things we have to do is we have to put the gantry, uh, the frame sorry, in the upright position so it's facing up as it will be used in, in the end. Now we can tell which way is up by this face here. There was a, um, a, pla a black plastic strip filling up the T-slot. So that's going to go to the top side. The underside uh, does not have that so it will be open on the other side. Right, so we're just going to lay that down and sit those on the blocks get it up off the surface. Right, next thing we need to do is we need to do, figure out which side is up and forward of the gantry so we put it on the correct way. Uh, we can do this simply by looking at the X carriage. The up position is going to be the, uh, the wheels that have the black axles as opposed to the wheels that have the stainless steel axles or the nuts if you like for adjusting tension. So the black axles are going to go facing up now to get the direction around the right way, we want the flattest side of the carriage plate to be facing forward. The back side has some M5 nuts on it which obviously make it very lumpy and we can't mount our tool plates onto there. So we're going to spin it so the black axles are facing out and the smooth side is facing forward to the front beam. Now what we're going to do is just going to gently slide it so the wheels are going to go over the, the extrusion, the side beams and they fit into the V slots on the extrusion. I'm just going to slide that on and then we're just going to slide it past the blocks so that it can sit flat. It's flat. So the frame's nice and flat again uh, and the gantry is free to move in and out. Right, now that we've done that we're going to stick the rear section of the frame on. That's this section here. So we also need to decide or decipher which way this goes as well. So Again, the red always goes to the outside, so that's going to be obvious. And what goes up is the same what went up on the front beam, and that's the fully enclosed uh, T-slot with a black plastic strip. Now on the back section, there's also the underside is partially closed, but it's also got um, a gap in the middle for a, a nuts for mounting the control box, and it's also got the um, centre mark on there as well. So we want to flip it up the other way, so the black infill is facing up again. Now simply as what we did last time is we just need to slide this with the steel corner brackets into the T-slot extrusion, into the Y-beams, slide it on like such. Right, and that's our complete frame. What we need to do now is put uh, some more M5 grub screws into this corner, and that's stage one over and done with. So to do that we'll just grab our screws. So again, grub screws just in the outermost hole, or the hole furthest away from the corner, on both ends, on both sides. So we're just going to tighten it up as we push it in, just making sure it's nice and flush on the sides, and hard up against the steel bracket. So you can just give that a little tweak. Come across and do the same on the other side. Again, we just need to make sure it's pushed in nice up snug against the aluminium. And we're just going to tighten that up. Like so. Okay, so now we're going to flip it over and just do the other side. 
we need to be careful is when we tip it up things are going to roll so what I like to do is push that to that side so it doesn't slide and roll and crash and we'll roll it over make sure the blocks are still under there holding it nice and flat and we'll put some grub screws into the other side again it's just the outermost hole ones first and just tighten those up so again not to over tighten we just want to tighten them up enough so they grab in and so they're probably approximately flush with the top of the steel corner bracket. Okay, same on this side. Just tighten that up. Right, now the next thing we want to do is we want to check the squareness of the frame. So we're just going to check it square before we put the final four grub screws in the bottom. That's the extra two on each end. So to do that, what we do is we grab a tape measure and we're going to measure the diagonals and see if they're the same. They need to, if they're the same, if exactly the same, the frame must be square. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook that on this corner end like that and I'm going to measure to a point over here. That says 743. And I'm going to measure the opposite over here to the same corners at the same point. And that says 741. So it's a little bit out of square. So what I'm going to do, this is the long edge. That's the short edge. So I'm just going to tap the long edge together a little, which will just shorten it up a bit. 742. 742. Okay, so that's now that's nice and square. We're just going to put these last four grub screws in. So those are the two holes closest to the corner in both cases. So we just pop those in. Tighten them up. Now the holes on the other side on the top side that don't have grub screws in it yet, we don't actually put grub screws in those. Um, those holes are to hold the top covers on, so we leave those empty for now. The other side ones we fill up. Okay, and the last one here. But what I like to do now that we've got all the grub screws in, I just like to quickly go around and just check that they're all tight. So we'll just quickly do that. You can even check the ones that were in place originally when Tully arrived at your house. Okay, so now we've done that, we'll flip Tully over again, again being careful not to let the carriages bang around. Okay, so again we're up this way. What I think we'll do now is we'll just quickly check those top grub screws to make sure they're nice and snug. That's a basic frame assembly done. Now we'll move on to uh, installing the, the uh, drive belts and the drive motors. By manipulating the motors and direction, you can control the forward and back motion of the gantry and the left to right of the X carriage. There are two drive belts, one on each motor. One starts on one side of the X carriage and it moves through a series of pulleys around the outside of the frame then back to the gantry and back to the adjacent side of the X-carriage. Same again on the opposite side, it goes the other direction around here, back down to where the drive motor will be mounted, back up to the gantry and across to the back again. Now these belts are on two different planes which allows them to pass over the top of each other which they do so inside the T-slot on the front of the, gantry, uh, front of the frame there. 
So to begin, what we need to do first is we'll mount the stepper motors, the drive motors, into the frame and then will allow us to um, feed the belt through the system. If you look at the two drive motors, you'll notice the pulley is mounted different from one to the other. On one of them, the teeth of the pulley are mounted to the top or the end of the shaft. The other, the teeth are mounted towards the motor or the bottom of the shaft. The motor that has a pulley with the teeth to the top of the shaft is the left hand motor. The one that has the teeth to the bottom of the shaft or near the motor is the right hand motor. Okay, so I'm gonna put the left hand motor in first. Just lift up the frame, drop that over. Now one side of the stepper motor has got a connector on it, which you can see here. We want the connector facing along the back frame, the back of the frame. So pointing inwards facing along the back of the frame. Now I'm just going to drop in the M3 by 6mm screws. Basically just drop them in to the slot there. Then I'm going to insert the um, the hex key through the slot in the top plate and we're just going to loosely just tighten those up just to, not so they're not tight they're just nipped up we'll put the other three bolts in within the same procedure so we're not going to tighten the bolts up yet we'll just put them all in to start with The slots are there so we can put a bit of tension on the belts once they're in. So once you've got the four screws in, just push it, push the motor all the way to the front of the machine. So that's along this direction, push it to the front and just tighten up the bolts so that the motor holds position. Okay, once we've done that, we're gonna flip over and do the same to the right hand motor. Okay, so now the same on the right hand side of the frame, we're going to put the right hand motor in, lift it up, drop it under, and again we'll just insert the bolts, the same as we did on the last motor. Once we've done this, we'll be ready to start running the belts. We need to slide the motor forward before we tighten up the screws. And you'll also notice that the connection is facing along the back of the frame as with the other motor. Now that we've got the motors installed, it's time to install the drive belts. The two drive belts, each has a crimped end. You'll see one's got, one end's got a crimp with a loop on it, the other end doesn't. So first off we're going to attach the crimped end to the front of the X carriage. Alright, so first off we're going to take one of the belts with the teeth facing out, away from the gantry, in front of the gantry. And then we're going to take one of these dowel pins and we're going to insert it into the loop of the belt like this. Then that belt and thing simply clip into the slot there and that'll sit in there like that. Next we're going to take the other belt which is identical to the first belt and we're going to do the same thing. So we'll grab a dowel pin We'll insert it into the loop and then we're going to clip that into the front plate of the X carriage. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to ins install the, the attachment side plate, slide plate onto the front of the X carriage there to stop those belts falling out. So this is the, the slide plate here. To attach it we need four 
M4 by 12 countersunk screws. So one, two, three, four. We'll also use the two and a half mil hex key to insert them. So we'll simply lift that up, line up the holes, and we'll insert the screws. Just do them loosely to start with until you get all screws in. So these will stop the belts falling out as we feed them around the frame. So once you've got those in you can give them a tighten up. Right, now that we've got that first step done, we can feed the belt around the rest of the frame. Now we're going to feed the left hand belt through the left hand gantry pulley through here. To help us feed the belt through the pulley, I'm going to use this piece of card, which is about 19 mils or 3 quarter inch wide. And I'm just going to curl the end of it by running it across the scissors. Then I'm going to feed this around the pulley and this will enable the belt to follow the same path. And make it easier to get the, the belt through the pulley. So one of the things we need to do when we're feeding the belt is we need to make sure we keep it facing the same way all the, th all the way. So with the teeth facing to the front, I'm now going to feed the belt through the pulley and by through the pulley I mean between the two flanges of the pulley. So not above it on the shaft but actually between the two flanges. So I'm just going to slide that through. And because we've got the card there it slides through nice and easy. And then I'm just going to pull it all the way through just to make sure it's got no twists in the belt. Right, so that's good. You can see the belt with the teeth facing forward as it goes around the pulley between the two flanges of the pulley and out the other side. So we can now remove the piece of cardboard. Now we'll move on to the front end pulley. We've just fed the first belt through the gantry pulley. Now we'll feed it through the front end pulley. You'll notice at the front end that there are two pulleys. As we're currently working on the low plane pulley system, we'll go through the low pulley. Making sure that the belt is not twisted, we're going to feed it through between the two pulleys, between the two flanges on the low pulley. So once we got that through, we can actually feed it back again so that we're going around the pulley. Check that we're between the two flanges and then carefully pull the belt through. The teeth should be against the pulley. So once you've done that, check to make sure there's no twists in the belt. Now we're going to feed the belt through the T-slot of the front beam over to the other side where we'll connect through the next pulley. Now that we've thread the belt through the, the front beam on the inside slot, we're going to feed it through the next pulley. So again we're aiming for the low pulley because we're doing the low set belt. I'm just going to pull it all the way through first. Again, making sure it's not twisted. Once we're all the way through, I'm going to go around the outside of the lower pulley and back and through to the inside of the frame. 
Again, making sure it's not twisted and that it's seated between the, the two flanges on the, on the lower pulley. From here we'll be able to feed it down through the side beam down to the back of the motor. Down through here. Now that we've run the belt from the X carriage along through the gantry pulley and through the two front pulleys, we'll now feed it behind the gantry in the T-slot opening on the side beam there. So we can simply do this just by poking it through like that. Again we're making sure that the belt is all running the same way and not twisted. And then we're going to feed it down past the stepper motor pulley. And we just pop it and make sure it's inside. Now we're going to feed the belt around the motor pulley. At this point your teeth should be facing towards the pulley so they engage with the teeth on the pulley. Go around like this. So make sure that the teeth are engaged between the belt and the pulley and then we'll head on back up to the gantry again. Now we're on the back of the gantry and we need to pass the, the belt through the back gantry pulley, like through here. Again, we're going to use our piece of cardboard. Just going to feed that through, like so. And then this will allow us to feed the belt around the pulley, like so, making sure that the belt, again, is not twisted and that the belt passes between the flanges of the pulley. Right, once we've got that we can just leave that to sit there and we'll go ahead and we'll do the other belt. The belt we've just installed tracks around here, along the frame, down through here, back and finishes behind the, the gantry carriage. The second belt we're about to install is going to run around the opposite direction and also end up behind the gantry carriage. It's also going to run on the upper plane, so we'll be using the bearings that are at the top rather than the bearings at the bottom. As we did with the first belt, we need to run the second belt through this pulley on the gantry and off up to the front pulley. So what we'll do is we'll insert the piece of card as we have previously done. This just helps pass the belt through the pulley. Right, again making sure that the belt isn't twisted and that the teeth are facing towards the front of the machine. We'll feed this through, again making sure we're going between the flanges of the pulley. Once we've got that started, we can simply pull that through. Careful that it doesn't get all tangled and twisted. Move a bit of card. And there we have it. Right, now we'll move on up to the front pulley, as we did with the first belt. Now we're going to feed the pulley the belt through the front pulley. This time we'll be going between the pulleys and we'll be aiming for the high pulley. So just make sure we pass it through there. It's between the two pulley axles and it's between the flanges of the top pulley. Poke it back through there. Pull it out. Again, making sure that the belt isn't twisted and that the belt passes between the flanges of the pulley. Now we can feed it through the front over to the other front pulley. Now we're over the other front corner and we're going to feed the belt through, remembering that we're going for the high pulley this time. So I'm just going to feed that through behind both axles, both pulleys, making sure the belt's not twisted, and then we'll just poke the belt into the channel there. Then we'll feed it back around <coughs> the top pulley, 
and bring it back out into the center again. Making sure it goes between the flanges of the pulley. Now we can head on down to the back pulley on the motor. On the way down to the back motor we need to feed the belt behind the Y carriage on the gantry. So we can simply do that by sliding it in the channel and sliding it on past all the way down to the motor. Again making sure the belt isn't twisted. If it is, like I've got it slightly twisted here, you can just twist it and it should come undone. Okay, so it fits nicely in there, and if you can see in there, the teeth are all facing out, which they should be. Back up to the gantry with the belt, we want to feed it around the pulley on the motor, and we want to make sure the teeth engage with the teeth on the pulley. Once we've done that, then we'll head on back up to the final pulley on the gantry. We're now on to the last pulley. I'm going to feed it through the pulley and over to the back of the X carriage. So again, I'm going to use a piece of card. Insert it in behind the pulley. And then follow it with the belt. Again, making sure the belt's not twisted. And that it passes between the flanges of the pulley. And there we have it. Next we'll be moving on to attaching both belts to the back of the carriage. Belts. First we're going to have to fold and crimp the ends of the belts like you would have seen when we first installed the belts on the other end. To do this we're going to need the two aluminium crimps, a pair of pliers and we'll also need the two roll pins to insert the belts into the back of the carriage. If we look on this toothed side of each belt you'll see a silver line marked on the top of one of the teeth. This is a point that we're going to fold the belt over to. So we're just going to take the belt and we're going to fold it over until the end of the belt touches the line that was marked on the teeth and also so that the teeth engage. Before we do that, what first we're going to do is we're going to slide one of the crimps on. Now the crimp is a uh, almost oval strip of aluminium that will have a slight gap on one side. So we want that gap to be facing up and we want the teeth on the belt to be facing up. And we're going to slide that on and we're going to slide it just past the silver line. So now that we fold the belt over till it just touches the silver line then we can slide the crimp back over both layers of the belt, like so. So we need to check that the belt finishes just before the silver line, which it does. Now before we close the crimp, what we're going to do is we're going to slide one of the dowels in there, like so. Then we're going to slide the crimp up nice and close to it. When it's like that, I'm going to grab the pliers and we're just simply going to squeeze it together. So give it a good hard squeeze. Now sometimes the crimp might open up a little bit, so what you can do is you can also just squeeze it back the other way to close that gap up. And then I like to just give it one last final squeeze in that direction. And that's done. So now we can do the same to the other bell. So again, we're going to slide on the crimp just past the silver line. Then we're going to fold the belt over until the end of it reaches the silver line, but you can still see the silver line. Then we'll slide the crimp back over both layers. Once we've done that, we'll insert the dowel pin. We'll then slide the crimp up nice and snug to the dowel pin and then we we'll use our pliers to crush the crimp. So again I crushed it in one direction and just close the opening and then just give it a final crimp. 
So there we go, nice and tight. So now that we've got that, we can simply just pop them into the cutout as we did at the beginning of the belts. One on that side and one on the other. Before we go any further, what I like to do now is just to check the belt, make sure it's not twisted, make sure it travels around the pulley correctly and make sure it's between the flanges of each pulley. You'll also notice that as the belts come around to the back of the machine that the teeth are no longer facing out, they're facing to the front. So both teeth of the front and the back belts should be facing towards you to the front of the machine. Next thing we need to do is we need to put a plate over here to stop the belts falling out during motion. So for that we have this plate here. It also has one of the datum pickups on it as well. So we're going to mount that to the back of that. To do that we're going to use four M4 by 6mm socket cap screws and for them you will need a 3mm hex key. So we'll just place that on the bar like that and we'll insert the screws. Just do them up loosely until you've got all bolts in. Make sure they're tight. Okay, so now that we've got the belts installed, the next thing we'll do is move on and we'll tension the belts. To tighten the belts, we're going to need a 2.5 hex key and a tape measure. To start off with, we're going to loosen the bolts that are holding the motors in place. So just loosen by half a turn. You can do that on both sides, on both motors. And then we're going to slide the motors back in their slots to put tension on the belts. Okay. So, it doesn't matter which side you start with, you just want to pull the motor back. Now, it might take two people to do it. I've done it a few times so I can do it without the help of an assistant. So you a matter of just pulling the motor back, putting a reasonable amount of tension onto the belt. In most cases, you'll be just pulling it back as far as it will go, particularly on the bigger machines where the belts are longer. And when it's pulled back, just nip up a couple of the bolts to hold it in position. Now we're going to come over and do the same on the other side. Pull it back. You can see it's a little bit tricky. And we'll just nip up a couple of bolts. Then we're going to do we'll take a measurement on both sides of the gantry and see how parallel we are with the back beam. So if we just measure, pick a point, hook onto the front of the gantry, measure to the back beam, 42. Same again on this side. 41. Okay, so we're a little bit short this side and a little bit long that side. So since that one's pulled all the way back, we just need to pull this one back a little further. Again, just loosen off the belt, the bolts. Give that a good pull back. And nip those bolts up. We'll just check that it's parallel now. 41.5. 41.5. There we go. So now that we've got it nice and parallel with the back beam, we'll go through and we'll tighten up all the bolts. Okay, we'll do the same on the other side. Four bolts on each motor. And 
and we're done. So now the uh, belts are nice and tensioned, should move nice and freely up and down like that, back and forth. There'll be a bit of tension in the, in the motors. Now that we've done that, we can actually nip up the bolts that we undid re previously uh, on the Y carriages. To do that, we'll need the 3mm hex key. So we can just go into those a little nip up. Again, we don't need to over tighten them. And then we'll flip the machine over and do the other side as well. You notice now that the there's tension on the motors that the gantry and the X carriage don't slide about so easily. Right, so that's about installed and tightened, motors in place, essentially the frame finished. We'll next move on to installing the um, limit switches and the motor cables. Now we'll install the limit switches. There's two limit switches on Tooley, and they both go in the back corners here, one on each side. So the limit switches should arrive with their mounting bracket already on them. And this is one here, recognisable by the orange cap on the end. So we're going to install these, one on each side. To do that, we're going to need two M5 by 10 millimeter thin head cap screws. And we're also going to need two of the M5 rectangle nuts. First we're going to install the rectangle nut. With the long edge of the rectangle vertical, we're going to slide it into the T-slot from the end. So in where the motor pulley is, we need to slide it in through there. So you'll see there's a black plastic insert in that T-slot already. But there's a small gap at the end where the nut fits into. So to install it I like to hook it onto the end of the hex key and then we're just going to reach in there and carefully slide it in. Just reaching my finger around from the back. It is a little bit tricky. There we go. So it's in there and it's pretty much flush with the edge. It can't go in too far, it'll hit the black plastic strip and go no further. Now that that's in, we'll take one of the limit switches and we'll take one of the M5 flat top screws and that simply pops in the hole of the mounting bracket and then we can screw it into the nut. So we'll just put it in there loosely first, nip it up a little bit so we just want to push it against the motor bracket there, the corner bracket, as far as it'll go, and then just tighten it up. And then we're going to pop across and do the same on the other side. So the same on the other side, we're going to put the rectangle bolt in with the long side vertical. Again, we'll use the hex key to help guide it in. Also, sliding your finger around the back and up a little bit as well. There we go, she's in. We'll grab the second limit switch. Now it doesn't matter which limit switch you use on which end, they're both the same. So a limit switch, again with the 10mm 5M5 bolt. We're just going to push it hard up against the corner bracket and then we'll tighten it up. And we're done. Next we'll run the cables and we'll install the electrical connection box. Now we're going to run the, the cables, these are the limit switch cables. We're also going to run the stepper motor cables. 
stepper motor cables are distinguishable by a white connector on one end and a black connector on the other end, four cables or four wires, and these will obviously vary in length depending on the size of your toolie. Um, we're also going to be installing the electrical connection box, or at least the top part of it. Um, to do this, what we're going to have to do is we've separate the lid from the base. We'll also need two M5 by 10mm thin head cat screws, and we'll be using the 2.5 and the 3mm hex keys. The first thing we need to do is remove the plastic inserts that are in the underside slot because we're going to run the cable through the cables through there. So to remove the plastic strips, simply use one of your hex keys, slip it under there and just lift it up and that should just pull out. Same on the other side, lift it on, pull it up and it'll pull out. We're next going to grab one of the stepper motor cables. This is recognisable by a white connector on one end, a black connector on the other end, and you'll notice there's four wires in it. So we're going to plug the white end into the stepper motor socket. Uh, the plugs can only go in one way. In this case with the contacts, the silver contacts you can see, they'll be facing up or to the end of the stepper motor. So we'll plug that in there, just make sure it's nicely pushed in. Now we're going to run the cable in the, into the slot of the aluminium profile. We'll just lay that in there. We're also going to run the cable for the limit switch in that same slot at the same time. So we'll poke that in as well. Okay, to hold those cables in there we're going to put the black plastic strip back into the slot. We can do this simply by pushing the end into the slot and then we're going to slide it forward towards the corner and we're going to stop about six mils or a quarter of an inch from the steel plate underneath just so we don't crush the cables so they can move freely. And then we'll press it all the way down being careful that we're not jamming the cables or the wires as we go through. So that holds the cables in nice and securely and we should still have a bit of movement in the cables there so they're not stressed. Now we'll do the same to the other side grab the other stepper motor cable again the white plug goes into the stepper motor, drop the cable, the wires into the slot, do the same with the sensor motor, the limit switch motor, this is a proximity sensor, and then we'll use the plastic, plastic strip to contain them again, pop that in and we'll slide it forward, just making sure those cables are free. And about six mils or quarter of an inch from the steel plate that you can see through there. And then we'll simply slide it in like that, and the cables are nice and concealed. Right, now we should have two nuts already contained in the slot, and you also have a silver mark signifying the centre of your frame. What we're going to do now is we're going to install the electrical connection box. So, this is the electrical connection box here. It's got a warning label on one side, it's got a connection on this side for connecting to the control box and it's also got a, another connector on the other side. First thing we need to do is we need to remove the four screws that are holding the lid to the base. We can do that with the 2mm hex key and we'll just quickly undo those. We just put them together like this for shipping. And once we do that, we're going to attach it to the base, but we're going to feed the cables through the holes first, which will be obvious in a second. Okay, so we have what we call the base unit and the cap. We'll put that aside for now. So this is what we're going to insert first and yes it does have a, a smiley face on it. So the two holes here which are the eyes, those are where the bolts are going to go through and connect into the nuts. The slots either side, we'll be using that to insert the cables 
from here through into the, into the box. Uh, the smiley face is for the head cable and the nose is what we're going to use to line up to the silver line on the frame. So it goes with the warning label to the front of the machine and then what we're going to do is we're going to insert these cables. So both cables go through the square slot on each side. So hopefully you can see that on camera. We'll just poke that one through. Whoop. Okay, we need to put the wider one, the stepper motor cable through first and then followed by the sensor cable. So we're going to do the same on the other side. Stepper motor cable first followed by the sensor cable. So once we've got those inserted we can slide the connection box down till it engages the aluminium frame. Now what you might have to do first is just slide the nuts to line up approximately with the holes first and then we're going to slide that down like so. Then we're going to use the two M5 by 10mm flathead screws to secure the box to the aluminium frame and we're going to look through the nose triangle of the, aluminium, of the box to find the silver line on the frame so we know that we've got it centred. So I'm just going to do that now. Now we'll use the two M5 by 10 thin head cap screws to secure the box to the frame. So you might want to just use your hex key and poke it through the hole, make sure the nut is lined up with the hole and then we can insert the, the screws. So we'll just nip those up tad first. Put them both in. Before we do them up tight we just want to make sure we haven't got the cables getting pinched in any way. Okay, so that seems nice and free there. So we'll just slowly put those up. And also make sure we've got our triangle on the centre mark there. Okay, so now that's all done. Cables are free to move. We'll move on and we'll um, attach the legs to the corners of the frame. Now we'll move on and install the legs. There's four legs, black with a toolbox logo on them and a rubber base on. We'll install one onto each corner. To do this we'll need more of the M5 rectangle nuts and more of the M5 by 10 thin head cap screws. First off we're going to slide nuts into the corner slots. So we can see here the red plastic finishes before the end of the aluminium extrusion and that gives us room to slide in one of the rectangle nuts. Again we'll have the long edge of the nut vertical and we can use the hex key to help slide that in. Slide that in as far as it can go. We'll do the same on the other side. Long edge vertical. Slide it in. Now with that in, place one of the legs in front of the thing. Now make sure the frame itself is sitting on your block of wood or your packer and then we'll drop the leg onto the frame, onto the piece of wood as well and then we'll pull it into the frame like so. Next we'll grab an M5 10mm screw. Again it might pay just to poke your hex key in the hole, make sure you centre the nut and then we can simply install from there. So to start with, we don't want to tighten it up until we get the other side in. 
So the same on the other side. Centre the nut. Insert the screw. Right, so before we nip it up, we just want to make sure that the everything's sitting nice and firm against the timber. And then just put a bit of pressure on the corner to force it in, and then we can nip up both sides. So I'll just nip up that first. Same on the other side. And then you can go ahead and, and tighten it up. Now just go ahead and repeat the process on the other three corners. Now that we've got the four legs on, it's time to put the top caps on the corners. To do this we'll need the four top caps. This is one here. Now you'll notice that there's two different varieties or two different types with slight differences between the two. One of them has a cutout on the left hand side, one has a cutout on the right hand side. You also notice that the cutouts are at different levels, so these are to mate up with the belts on the two different planes. So what we'll also need is we'll need some more of the 5 M5 by 10mm thin head cap screws. Alright, to get started, we'll flip Tooley over. Now at this point we no, no longer need the wooden blocks. Tooley can stand on its own feet, so to speak. Just remove those blocks out of the way. Right, so we'll grab the first corner cap. So you can see on the back left hand corner here that the belt is on the high plane. So we need to choose the corner bracket that has the, the high cutout. And to insert it we basically need to work around the belt slightly so we just drop it down and slide it around like that. And you can see the belt comfortably goes between the, the cutout there. We'll next use the M5 by 10mm thin head socket cap screws and we'll secure the, the corner bracket. Now these bolts are going into the holes in the steel corner brackets that we didn't use previously. And they'll hold the caps in there, just again tighten them down. We'll move on and do the same to each corner. Okay, with the legs on and the corner caps on, it's time to move on. Now, if your toolie came with either the airbrush attachment or the dispensing options, we're going to need to install a solenoid valve. Uh, this gets mounted to the back of the frame. There's a bracket already on there that it attaches onto. Now, to attach it, we're going to need, obviously, the solenoid valve, and we're going to need two M3 by 22mm socket cap screws. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the short red plastic strip insert. Again, we'll just use the hex key, get underneath it, and we'll pull it out. Then we're going to take the solenoid valve and the M3 by 22mm socket cap screws. Now they go into these small holes, which will then screw into the lower holes on the mounting bracket there. So we'll insert that first. Now you notice that the cable will poke inside the T-slot extrusion, inside the slot. Let's get that first one started. And then we'll get the next one in. Now we want to put the solenoid on with the writing right way up. So the elbow connection on the top, straight connection on the bottom. So we can just tighten those screws up now. The next thing we want to do is we want to feed the cable. So the cable will actually go down through that top hole in the connection box. And then what we'll do is we'll put the red strip back in. Simply start at the end and we'll slide it in as far as it will go. and then clip it in so there's still a bit of room on the left hand side of the nut for the cable to pass through. Next we're going to install the overhead attachment cable. This is the cable that connects 
the attachment that you place onto the head here to the control system. Now the attachment um, cable assembly will arrive in two pieces. There's this part here which is the, what we call the reach arm. This is the part that reaches forward and controls the cable. And we also have the rise which is what lifts the cable arm up. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the little holding screw from the end of the rise. So we'll simply take that out. Right, now that we've got that out, what we're going to do is we're going to slide the cable through that section of the frame, of the arm. And then this is going to slide over the plastic corner joint like that. And once that's in, we can then insert the, the screw, retaining screw back in. Once we've got this all done up, we can then install the arm onto the back of the tooling frame. To install the cable arm we're going to need an M5 by 25 button head cap screw and the 3mm hex key. This is going to get threaded into the nut that's already in place between the two red plastic strips here. First off we need to insert the screw into the arm itself. We simply do that by inserting it through the plastic the hole in the plastic there. And what we want to do is we want to have the cable on the left hand side of the screw so that the cable we inserted earlier for the solenoid can go on the other side there. So once we've got that in, we'll turn it around, we'll insert the cable down through the hole to the connection box, through the connection box. And we're going to push that all the way down and then we're going to tighten up the screw. It's a little bit tricky to find the... there we go. Okay, so before we tighten it all the way up, we just want to make sure that both those cables, the solenoid and the head cable, are free and aren't being pinched in any way. And then we can go ahead and tighten that up. Okay, and that's the cable arm installed. Next we'll go on and we'll join the, put the rest of the connection box on and we'll plug the cables in as, as they need to go. Next we're going to make the connections. So we need to connect the stepper motor cables, the solenoid cables, the sensor cables and the head cable. We're going to connect them to the base of the connection box which has also got the PCB in it that we're going to connect to. So you can see on the PCB here there are different connectors for each of the cables. So if we start here we notice there's a right side and a left hand side connection block. On this side we have the right hand motor and the right hand sensor, left hand motor, left hand sensor. We also have sole, which is for the solenoid, and we have main, which is for the head cable that we've just installed. Now you'll notice, if you look at the line around these two blocks, there's little indents on one side. That's to help us get the plug around the right way. You'll also notice on the plug there will be a mark there which will help you identify which way around the plugs go onto the connectors. Right, we'll go ahead and make the connections. First we'll point out that the right hand motor and sensor will appear on the left hand side as you're looking at it. This is because we determine the right hand motor being the one on the right hand side when you're standing in front of the machine looking at it. That's why it's reversed at the moment. Now if you reach up underneath and have a look and have a feel, we want the cables that are coming from this side motor and sensor we want them coming out this side. So this is the right hand side based on looking at it from the front. And we'll also notice on these connectors that 
there'll be an identifying mark on one side of the connector. So there's nothing on that side, yet there's a mark on this side. The same with the sensor cable, it's a mark on one side, not on the other. These marks will line up with the dimples in the line around the perimeter of the sensor cable and the motor cable. This helps us identify getting the cables around the right way. We can also tell the difference between a motor cable and a sensor cable. If we look at the connection PCB, we'll notice that there's four pins for the motor cable, so therefore we want the cable with four wires going to it. So we'll go ahead and connect the motor cable. So this is the right hand side, it comes from the right hand motor, and we've got the dimple, or the mark, we're going to line it up with the dimple here, so we're going to turn it that way. And to connect it, we simply slide the four pins over and press it down firmly. Now we can go ahead and do the same with the sensor coming from the same side. Again, we've got the identifying mark, line it up with the dimple and the line, and we'll press it on. Right, next we'll go ahead and do the same with the left hand motor and sensor. So we'll bring that through, we're going to look for the mark, there it is there, we'll slide that over, and the same with the sensor cable. Now the other thing you can look for is that the wire colours should be matching on both sides for the left hand and for the right hand. So if we see here we go blue, black, brown, on the opposite side it also should be blue, black, brown. Right, now the next thing we'll connect is the solenoid cable. We'll feed that through. Now the solenoid cable, it doesn't matter which way around that goes, it makes no difference to the solenoid. So we just connect that up, like so. Right, now for the last cable is the head cable. Now the head cable also has a mark on it, which is, corresponds with a matching mark on the PCB. So again, we need to put that on the right side. Now, if the cable is difficult to get on, what we need to do is we need to, from the top end of the cable arm, just push the cable through a tad, so it makes it a little bit longer for us to work with. And then we can simply plug that into the connector as well. It's a little bit hard to get in, lining up 10 pins. So just make sure that's nice and secure down. And also make sure that you have all 10 pins actually in the sockets. So there should be even gaps either side of the plug. Okay, now we can engage the connection box. To do this we'll need the four screws that we removed previously. Now when lifting this up you might want to pull the head cable back through to a point where it can't pull through any further. And then you just need to carefully guide everything up. And then we can reinsert the screws. Now when you're reinserting the screws, just make sure you're not pinching any of the cables. Just check that none of the cables are poking out the sides or the front. Oh, you can see there I've got one poking out the front. I'll just poke that back in. It's a little bit fiddly. Again, don't tighten up any of the screws until you've got all four in. Just helps with alignment. If you received and fitted the pneumatic solenoid on the machine, you'll also would have received two airlines. 
like so. Now one of the airlines has a quick fitting, quick release fitting on it, and that's the fitting that goes to the attachment which mounts on the X carriage. It also has a flow control knob on it as well. So we'll fit that first. To fit it we take the end without any component attached to it and we're going to insert it and feed it down the cable arm. So we're just going to feed that through and we just pull it directly straight out the back. Okay. So we just leave that sitting there for now. Now the other end we need to fit to the solenoid and that goes to the top elbow connection on the top of the solenoid. So I'm just going to push that in. So it's just a push in fitting. So you just need to line up with the hole and push it in until it can't go in any further and then when you pull it, it won't come out. Now if you do want to take it out, you need to pull the uh, black moving clip that's at the front, you need to pull that in and then you can pull the tube out. So we'll push that in there. Okay. So as you use the uh, attachments that need compressed air, you just generally slide that out, attach it to it and when you're finished, you just feed it back and it can just sit there. Now, when it's not connected to anything, no air can come out, so it won't present a, a safety hazard at that point. The other airline we receive, you receive, is uh, the feed to the solenoid. So they'll have a connector on one end, which you'll need to have a fitting for your compressor, and the other end, without any fitment on it, needs to attach to the inlet, which is the fitting on the underside. So we'll just fit that in there. And that one you'll just run off to your compressor or your compressor line. Okay, next we'll move on and we'll um, fit the cable that connects the control system to Tooley and the power supply from there. So now we're going to move on and we're going to hook up the control system, which is a touchscreen controller for Tooley, and we're going to use the DB25 connection cable to connect between the two. So if we look at the back of the touch control system here, it's got the same connection that was on our uh, machine control box, which is that one there. It also has a USB connector, so that takes a, a printer type style USB cable. Uh, you would use that if we were updating firmware. Um, and that's just a power inlet for the DC power. So what we're going to do is we'll plug the cable in to that end first. And this is where we would use a small screwdriver. Now both ends of the cable are the same, so it doesn't matter which end you put on which. So we just push that in there, and then just with a small screwdriver, it can be a Phillips or a blade, we're just going to tighten up those screws. This is just so we don't accidentally knock the cable out if something moves or... Okay, so now we've got that. We can also plug in the AC-DC adapter, so that simply just pushes in there like so. Now we'll turn that around, okay so the other end of the cable in this case goes to the control box and if you notice on the underside when we put that in there's actually a, a like connector on that. So we'll do the same again, we're going to simply push that on, take the little screwdriver and we'll just secure it on there. Okay, now with the DC power supply, it's just a 12 volt 5 amp power supply, uh, you should have received a, a plug cable for it which just plugs in like so. Now, each country has a, a different plug, or potentially, so you should have received the right plug for uh, your country. That would simply plug into the wall, and that's all we need to do to hook Tooley up. Okay, so we're almost done. I'm just going to show you one last thing, and that's how to install an attachment. I've got the plotter attachment here, and we use this as an example. So the plotter attachment slides into the slide on the X carriage. Now when you're installing the, uh, any attachment into the, into the slide, just loosen off one side. Keep the other side tight and that will help keep your tool parallel or perpendicular to the surface. To, to insert it, 
rock it on a bit of an angle, push it against the side that you've loosened, roll it down and then slide it down and set it to what height you need. I'll show you how to set up an attachment, the plotter, the laser and the airbrush attachment uh, in another video. Okay, now we need to connect the head cable or the attachment cable. If you look at the attachment cable, there's a, a dip, if you like, in the plastic that's helped to help align uh, the pins up. There's a corresponding lump or bump, if you like, on the um, head itself. And you simply just line those up, push the cable down, and then just tighten the nut. Again, you don't need to over tighten it. And that concludes our assembly video. I hope you enjoy using your toolie.